All right, viewers, and thanks for tuning in to this is only the second episode here of the COVID Chronicles. Then and now we'll be talking about what was going on last March 20th, March 20th, 2020, and what's going on this year, March 20th, 2021. And the first thing I'd like to do is cite our mission. So at smashamash.com slash forum slash mission, you can read the rest of the entries on this and the COVID chronicles figure in mostly perhaps to number six of our mission. If you head to smashamash.com slash forum slash mission, you can read the rest. Number six of our mission is to assist mankind by advancing the study of predictive phenomenon in order to optimize value, reduce risk and liability, save lives and resources, and adapt no matter what the adversity is. So whether the adversity is big tech censorship or the adversity is COVID-19, we look for ways to adapt to that. So one of the ways we've adapted to things like big tech censorship is to create our own domain. So at smashomash.com, you can find links to our social media and so on. But what we're talking about today is the Smasho Forum. So last year, starting January 23rd, we made a very, very in-depth forum thread about the COVID. So if you head to any of our smashomash.com slash forum links, the main forums. This one's the free for all forum. We've global stickied the coronavirus thread into all of them. So we're going to go to about page 14 here. Let me just go to page two to get the syntax because we want to go to today's date. So again, we started this, we started this on uh, January 23rd, 2020, and we stopped updating it in mid July. So you can actually go update this yourself if you like. Uh, there have been some posts recently in here and thanks to everybody who's posting. Currently smashamash.com slash forum is completely free. You just have to set up a login using your email and a password. So if you didn't watch yesterday's COVID Chronicles for March 19th, it was a very important date because it uh, was the date of a video that's now only available on BitChute. So there is a video only available on BitChute, folks, and we won't worry about specifically citing that or anything. It is our most watched video. So if you head to bitshoot.com slash smashomash, you'll be able to see that. And we made that a BitChute exclusive because YouTube demonetized the video. So what, what we did is we created a BitChute exclusive for that because we did not want the useful information in said video to be suppressed by the YouTube junkware Google algorithm. So yesterday, our entry, I, rather a year ago today, our entry was what is herd immunity and will it affect the pandemic? So we were already talking about herd immunity on March 20th of last year. And obviously there have been some, uh, some ups and downs when it comes to herd immunity, as we certainly listened to Dr. Fauci flip-flop on every possible thing. And I would remind everybody that the reason that we made merch featuring Dr. Fauci's face is because Dr. Fauci has lied to mankind at least two times with respect to the COVID. So when the COVID first showed up and everybody was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Let's wear masks. Fauci famous, famously said, we don't need people walking around in public with masks on, okay? See that mask? Be a shame if there was a shortage of those for healthcare professionals, eh? Eh? And that is one of the things that happened last year. I think that was in March, actually. He was interviewed by, I don't know who it was, but Fauci famously said people don't need to be walking around with, ma with masks on because it doesn't provide the perfect protection that everybody thinks it does. And that, guess why he lied, folks? He later admitted that he was intentionally misrepresenting material facts otherwise known as committing fraud by saying that. And the reason he was saying that is because he didn't want to create a shortage for healthcare personnel getting masks. He didn't want everybody to go buy up all the masks like they did the toilet paper. And so he went around telling people 
that the masks aren't effective at stopping viruses. Now he says two masks are more effective than one mask and it's crucial to wear masks and so on. And since then, he's also admitted defrauding everybody about the requirements for herd immunity. So if you remember, Fauci also famously interviewed with the New York Times and he said something to the effect of when I heard polls saying that only 60 to 65 percent would take a vaccine, I was telling people that we would need 70 to 75 percent of the population vaccinated in order to reach herd immunity. Then when I heard another poll that said 70 to 75 percent would take the vaccine, I decided that I can bump this up a little bit to 80-85% requirement for vaccination to reach herd immunity. So that's at least a second time Dr. Fauci provably committed fraud. And I would remind everybody that the definition of the word fraud is to intentionally misrepresent material facts. Now, so that's one thing we were talking about last year. That's the only entry in the forum from last year on March 20th. But if you're interested in what was going on on February 20th, it's all in there, folks. This document is over 30 pages long, and we painstakingly copy-pasted all the articles in there just in case anybody decided to scrub articles or alter articles. We've still got the original printed from that day as well as the link to it. So this one here was from Reuters. And here's just one quote from it. With the new coronavirus outbreak, Current evidence suggests that one infected person on average infects between two and three others. That means that if no other measures are taken, herd immunity would kick in when between 50 and 70 percent of the population is immune. So without further contextualizing that, let's go check some news sources. How about one of the shockingly leftist news sources? Huffington Post. So the chief headline today is, Poisoned palace. Trump riot looms over Capitol. Now, they've built a wall around the Capitol, which is a great way to keep all the criminals in, although I think they've been allowing our legislators to return home. So I don't know if they're if they're if it's some sort of a, a weekend furloughs or what's going on here. Uh, but I thought the wall was doing a great job in keeping all those criminals in Washington, D.C. Leave us a comment if you have a theory about this. So that's the HuffPo is looking for a way to try to get Donald Trump once again in their main headline. The second headline is Feinstein moves finally open to filibuster reform. Oh, geez, that's going to bite Democrats in the you know what if they decide to get rid of the filibuster. They do have they do have Fagradalsfjall, the Icelandic volcano eruption. And let's go to a different news source because this one is so distasteful. How about cbsnews.com? And let's see what the big headline is on cbsnews.com. Looks like another sexual harassment claim made by one of, I, I guess, Cuomo's current aide. Very nice. And remember, folks, nobody was very concerned about tens of thousands of people dying in nursing homes. But as soon as you diddle the staff... Uh, it's it's a no-no. So, you know, diddling the staff is really bad, but causing tens of thousands of deaths is just eh. So let's see what the top headlines here are, and it looks like the top headline is related to COVID, as I see somebody dressed like a complete COVID idiot. 48% of U.S. healthcare workers still haven't received the vaccine, and is that because they don't want it? I'm pretty sure they're on the front line. They probably have access. Every day, more Americans become eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine, and yet nearly half of all frontline healthcare workers remain unvaccinated, even though they were given priority access to the first available doses. Only 52% say they've received even a first dose of the vaccine, according to a new report from the Kaiser Family Foundation and the Washington Post. That leaves the other 40%. Entirely unprotected against and vulnerable to the virus. Researchers, uh, that is unless they have natural immunity. Researchers surveyed more than 1,300 healthcare workers whose jobs exposed them to patients or bodily fluids, put them, putting them at higher risk than others of contracting COVID-19, which 
more than one year into the pandemic, has infected nearly 30 million Americans and killed more than 500,000. Side effects concern some. Vaccine skepticism among, among black Americans, allegedly. And I'm not aware of any stats on demographic breakdowns of who wants and who doesn't want a vaccine. Let's check another news source here. We'll go to Zero Hedge real quick for all of our libertarian viewers. And I'll display this on the screen so you can see what I'm looking at. And there you go. you got Fjall once again, the volcano near Reykjavik. Saudi Arabia's national oil company Aramco confirms new Iran-backed drone attack on their facility. Visualizi visualizing the world's deadliest pandemics by population impact. Folks, let's see. How about the Black Death? It knocked out nearly half of the world's population. How about the Justinian Plague? 19% of the world's population. Smallpox, 12.1%. The, Anto the Antonin Plague... 2.6% of the population, Spanish flu, 2.5%, AIDS, 0.7%, COVID-19, 0.03% of the population. You saw it there. I put it on the screen. Let's continue on. By the way, that article is originally from Visual Capitalist. Visual Capitalist, their full-length article entitled The History of Pandemics. And let's go back to the main homepage here, being featured today on the Smash News Network, Least Busted Name in News. How about money printing? Are you ready for the inflation? Have you noticed the helicopter money that's been raining down on everybody who has a bank account? Yes. UK prepares antitrust probe into Facebook as big tech continues to self-destruct, as I've been calling for years, because... Let me just explain something to you folks. In 2018, a crack YouTube unit was sent to social media prison for a crime it didn't commit. We promptly escaped to the internet underground where we survive as producers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find our videos, maybe you can hire the Smash Team. That was 2018, around Christmas. And uh, actually, interestingly enough, Facebook's share price crashed around the same time that we started to get very critical of Facebook. Now, I'm not suggesting it's my fault, although that would be some lovely wishful thinking. Antitrust probes into Facebook. Yeah. So Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, and Twitter especially have been misleading their shareholders, their investors, for who knows how long, but certainly most investors are not paying big tech organizations to do what it is they've been doing lately whether it's from search space or whether it's from proprietary software on hardware devices or whether it's online censorship. Most investors probably are not even aware of how biased big tech is. It's 100% obvious. Continuing on, German researchers link AstraZeneca jab to rare blood clots. Some more side effects being reported there on the AstraZeneca vaccine, which has been, I believe that's the one that's been banned in a few countries there. Is the price of gold really going up, folks, or is the price of the dollar just sinking? Well, most world currencies are sinking as there is rampant inflation across most all fiat money. As we see the prices of certain things really increasing, Are you a believer that HR1 threatens election integrity? And let's pull up one more uh, news source here. Let's go to, oh, I don't know. How about USA Today again? We looked at USA Today yesterday. Let's see what the headlines are at USA Today before we close this COVID Chronicles Then and Now segment out. This special presentation of the Smash News Network. The top headline is, After Atlanta, Americans of Color Demand Unity Against White Supremacy. Apparently, white supremacy is still an issue, even though it had nothing to do with the shootings. But I'm not going to go there. 
So that's the leading headline. Here's a leading COVID headline. Schools already test already COVID testing students and staff say it's crucial to in-person class. It's worth it. And here's a clip from President Joe Biden. I thought possible. Over the next 10 days, we'll reach. Did I cut him off? I, I don't know how it happened. 10 days, we'll reach two goals, two giant goals. First is 100 million shots in people's arms will have been completed within the next 10 days. Oh, well, thank goodness. I was very concerned about it. Now, folks, if you're wondering if I'll be getting a vaccine, the answer is no. I am far too sensitive to heavy metals. And in the last year, as a result of being forced to wear a certain kind of masks by Fisher brand, the kind that have triple layer nonwoven polypropylene filters and polyester wrapped elastic earbands, I've also developed an allergy, apparently, to plastics. So no vaccine for me. Sorry, folks. It's just not going to happen. It's just not even it wouldn't even be worth it if I wasn't sensitive to heavy metals and to plastics. But since I am, it's not even in the realm of possibility. It would be a very, very foolish move. So anyway, people talking about how kids better get vaccinated in order to go back to school because uh, even though they're, well, let's just say the, the danger of death or even showing a symptom for young kids is nowhere near what it's like for the flu. So let's just close things out there. And I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to another edition here of the COVID Chronicles. This has been... March 20th, 2020, and March 20th, 2021. COVID Chronicles, then and now. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash And thanks again for tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news.